Hey guys, and welcome back to Nerd Niche. Today, I wanna to get a little science nerdy with you. There's been so much talk about climate change right now in our generation, which is a good thing. We're gonna talk a little bit about climate change, but that's not the purpose of this video. First, let's look at some stats. Since the 19th century, a change driven largely by increased amounts of carbon dioxide caused by human-made emissions and resources have affected our climate drastically. And majority of this warming is caused within the last 35 years. The oceans have absorbed the majority of its heat. With the top 700 meters of ocean warming up to 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969, Greenland and Antarctica's ice sheets have decreased in mass. Scientists found that Greenland actually lost 286 billion tons of ice per year from 93 to 2016. Antarctica, 127 billion tons. That is insane. Glaciers retreating everywhere. Sea levels are rising. Extreme events like hurricanes and wildfires. Even the acidity of the surface of the ocean has increased by a whopping 30% because of the increased amount of carbon dioxide. And these statistics are real. 97% of current climate change scientists believe to be directly caused by humans. Now, whether you want to believe these or not, it really does only take a few hours to go and research some scientific papers. Go see for yourself. Go look at the statistics or just simply open your eyes. In Canada, each year where I am, you can visibly see the change in climate each year. It's scary. Soon, our frost-free season and growing season will lengthen. Heavy precipitation, drought, and heat waves. Hurricanes are gonna become way more intense. The Arctic will be ice free. Now these things may seem like tiny stats and a lot of people don't even wanna hear this. Most do think, meh, this isn't gonna happen in my lifetime, but actually, it might. A paper published by the Breakthrough National Centre of Climate Restoration in Melbourne, Australia wrote a thesis based on stats from 2018 to predict the rapid changes in climate in the last few years and the years to come. These changes could lead our planet to its demise or irreversible changes before the year 2050. Are you going to be alive in 30 years? Now we're hearing lots about climate change on social media, on TV, and it's basically everywhere which is a good thing. However, a lot of people still believe that climate change is one big conspiracy, but we need to educate ourselves with science. Guys, the facts are there. You might wanna do some research for yourself. Climate change is not fake. And I don't have to be a scientist to tell you that, but this video was never made an attempt to educate you on things that you can already find on the TV, social media, and all over the internet. Now, a lot of the ways that we could help to reduce the negative effects of climate change were taught to us when we were in kindergarten. Things like planting more trees, using less plastic, eating less meat, drive less, fly less, and educating our children. And that doesn't mean just educating them by listing or reading them a bunch of facts. Showing them the behaviors that you create yourselves can affect them positively in unimaginable ways. But what I really wanted to show you guys was a little something that I watched a couple years ago. It's a documentary called The Venus Project. Now this is not some paid video or sponsored advertisement. This is a documentary that I stumbled upon on YouTube and it blew my mind. The Venus Project is a nonprofit organization. It presents a new socioeconomic model that utilizes science and technology for the betterment of human, animals, and our planet. Let me explain a bit without nerding out too hard on you guys. Here are the basics. No money, no poverty, no crime, zero waste, with all decisions based directly around science. Science rules. The theory states that no one would be without a home. Nobody would be without food. We use our minds and technology to just help each other out. Our current life system revolves around money. It's corrupt. It leaves us little room for growth. How are there people still in this world struggling every single day with the amount of information and resources we have as a planet? It doesn't make any sense. This was the worry of Jacques Fresco when he used his experience in design and architecture to envision a better life for us all. 
and for our planet. With the Venus Project in place, people would have more time to live a physically and mentally healthier life. Let's take a look at the model. This model looks similar to some theories of Atlantis. It has this crop circle looking design, but it all revolves around this central hub. The core offers lots of different resources for everyone in the community. It offers everyone resource management, educational and healthcare facilities, as well as communication and networking. It's basically one big giant library for all. Then around the hub, you've got professional buildings with office spaces, institutions, and research laboratories. And surrounding it is a beautiful green belt. The green belt provides recreation and parks. Then you've got a residential belt for homes that is surrounded by lush greenery. So everyone has privacy as well as the feeling of being in the middle of mother nature. All homes would be equipped with solar panels and solar energy is a key part to this entire community. There are high rises, restaurants, entertainment centers, all of the things that we love today. Then we've got an agricultural belt that is filled with hydroponic, aquaponic and aeroponic facilities that is circled by water for irrigation, kind of like a moat around a castle. The second recreational belt is made for outdoor activities like golf, hiking, riding your bike, going for walks. The idea of transportation is shared and handled only by environmentally friendly vehicles. All personal needs are provided, so shopping isn't even a thing. All utilities are handled by a supercomputer in the hub. So that's checked off our list of worries too. And each city has a max capacity, so no resources are depleted. And if more people came, they would just create a new city. The first city was supposed to be made for testing and perfecting these little communities. Jacques' dream was to spread this throughout the entire planet. It was his vision of world peace. He wanted to benefit all species and help humans advance as their own. Now, I know you're thinking, this is so unrealistic. And you know what? Honestly, in our generation, it probably is. But the Venus Project is a beautiful idea. And realistically, the people with the money that could actually make this happen probably won't. They love their fancy cars and mansions, living the life of power and freedom. But technology is going to continue to eliminate our jobs instead of providing resources to benefit us all. And you know, Walt Disney had a similar vision for his Epcot Center. But once his vision started coming to life, two months later, Walt Disney passed away. There are still a few people in our world that would encourage this idea. And I, for one, would really love to see this come to life. Some locations around the world are implementing these smart city ideas, but the changes are not drastic. Places like Amsterdam, Hong Kong, Seoul, South Korea, and Toronto, Canada. But the effort is just not powerful enough to influence the rest of the world. I really just wanted to share this with you because I thought it was an amazing documentary and like I said, a beautiful idea. Jacques had this beautiful dream and unfortunately, he did pass away on May 18th, 2017. At the age of 101 years old, it is sad to know that he will never see his vision come to life. You guys can watch the full documentary of the Venus Project here on YouTube, and I recommend that you do. I will throw the link of the documentary in the description below so that it's an easy find. It is a really good watch for us all, and although it may never become a reality, it's a great way to see how humans can use our strengths and knowledge to benefit not only each other, but the planet and the world that we have to live in in the future. I hope you guys will give the documentary a watch and I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about the Venus Project in the comments below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts and I hope you guys will subscribe to the channel for more nerdy fun in the future. And until then, we'll see you next time. Bye.